Hi, it's Jack Kaluki from Nitrix, and in this video I'll explain why process control is so crucial in nitriding and nitrocarburizing, and makes those processes so practical. Nitriding and nitrocarburizing are essentially meant to improve the hardness and wear resistance of many components. But hardness carries a price, and excessive hardness is not always a good thing. Did you ever break a drill bit, a file or another tool? If you have, you probably realize that very hard steel will not bend or yield, and hardness comes with brittleness. And this is why extremely hard materials may shatter like glass. Nitriding and nitrocarburizing processes derive from the same catalytic reaction, where ammonia dissociates and atomic nitrogen is absorbed into steel and iron surfaces. Nitrogen diffusion contributes compressive stresses, which we perceive as hardness. Similar to inflating a tire, we place more atoms in the same defined volume, but at one point we need to stop inflating or something unwanted will happen. At the beginning of the process, the flow of ammonia provides a source of nitrogen necessary to create a compound layer or white layer. This is necessary as the white layer helps diffuse nitrogen deeper into the surface. The white layer may contain up to 10% nitrogen and builds up very readily, but the diffusion into the steel is a much slower process. If one continues the process for too long to obtain a deeper case, a thicker diffusion layer, this high flow of ammonia becomes excessive. A high flow of ammonia signifies a high availability of nitrogen. Nitrogen starts piling up on the surface, creating a thick, brittle white layer without mechanical properties. It has to be removed, ground away. Even worse, when a surface and steel structure is oversaturated at high temperature, excess nitrogen will precipitate out during cooling. It will usually accumulate in grain boundaries in what is called intergranular nitrides, or simply IGN. On corners, such as a corner of a gear tooth, where two adjacent surfaces have been oversaturated, this IGN will form a network just waiting to break off because of all the compressive stress accumulated within. This is why nitriding and nitrocarburizing have continuously evolved for over a century. Until the introduction of the two-stage flow process, nitriding was done in a single-stage process using fixed flows. The flow process reduced the flow or introduced diluting gases in the second stage to reduce oversaturation. Eventually, process controls adapted the measurement of dissociation in the exhaust gas to quantify the chemical reaction that took place in the furnace and adjust the atmosphere to increase or reduce the quantity of nitrogen available to the surface of components being treated. The most recent improvement relies on the concept of nitriding potential, first developed 90 years ago by Lehrer. His iron nitrogen diagram has been further modified to incorporate curves representing constant nitrogen concentration in iron as a function of temperature and nitriding potential. Now, not only can we target the nitriding potential at any given temperature, but we can also predict the nitriding results and avoid costly mistakes. Click on the screen right now to watch another video on nitriding and nitrocarburizing. Make sure to leave a like or a comment and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.